All right, you're looking at one of our top business stories in a little bit more detail this morning. UAE employees are amongst the hardest working in the world, uh, hours-wise, according to a new survey. But is it actually good for a company? And for us, we are joined by the workplace culture expert, Lucy Darbo, who is the CEO of Together. Lucy, it's lovely to see you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. And it's ironic that we are talking about workplace culture while we are sitting in a giant office emporium. Let's look at that survey. The UAE coming in third. Around half of us working, I've got the numbers here, 49 hours a week. Put that in context for us. Is that actually a lot? I have to confess, I mean, we've all been here for... You know, me, me personally, more than 20 years, I think we know as anecdotally that this is one of the hardest working countries in the world. However, I think it gets set by the leadership. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum's greatest quote when he launched his TikTok channel, he was stated as saying in the UAE or in Dubai, I don't care if you're a gazelle or a lion. When you wake up, you better start running. So I think that really, like workplace culture, sets the tone at the top. Leadership have continually made the impossible possible, and that comes from the dedication and ambition and hard work of the workforce here in Dubai. There's dedication and hard work, though, and then there is presenteeism and just making up the numbers, and that's my concern with this list. Do we want to be known for just clocking in and doing the overtime? You're absolutely right. There's two versions of hard work. There's hard work that's a grind, that I'm clocking up 49 hours a week. I'm demotivated, disengaged, and disinterested. And there is a motivated, engaged workforce who 49 hours a week will fly past because there is a level of fulfillment and they're purpose-led in what they do. So the study also talks about flexible working and it suggests that the whole work from anywhere, flexible working culture, might be bringing with it a culture of overwork. What do you think? Work from home has absolutely been the best improvement in the workplace environment. Productivity argument has been settled, I think. We've seen so many studies to demonstrate that productivity is up. However, there is a consequence, right? That always on 24 seven availability can have serious consequences for the negative. And that's where organizations and leaders out there really have to dedicate their time to support and resources to build efficiency, make sure there's mental health support and that there is a considerable amount of well-being support as well. Is it inevitable that mission creep with working from home, does it have to happen? Look, a lot of it comes to the individual. Discipline plays a huge part of it. Are you able to switch on and switch off and conduct your work in a more traditional structure? But a lot of it comes down to leadership and managers. What we've seen over and over again, our managers are ill-equipped to lead in a remote format. What it requires is really long-term goal setting, objective setting, rather than what we know is quite common here, task-oriented managers and that's very difficult to manage when you're remote so it could mean that someone would really work excessively if they're not led right. Why do we have that task-orientated culture? How do you think that's evolved? Mostly it's lack of training honestly. If you think of how to be excellent at anything it requires investment of time, energy and proper formal training. If managers are just promoted over and over because their results are excellent or because of presenteeism they may not have the skills that are required or the necessary training to actually lead, build and run a team and meet goals appropriately. Where's the line though between having boundaries and slacking off and is it viewed differently between generations? There is definitely a generational gap but we see that across the board. We know that Gen Z much prefer to be at home. You know, COVID has had a huge impact on that next generation of workforce. They're much more inclined to stay home, to stay private. You covered it I think a couple of weeks ago when Arvind Krishna, CEO of IBM, um, warned the workforce that working from home could kill their careers. And sad but true, there is merit in that statement. Being present and learning from those around you is really important for career development, but training and development as well. He basically said you're not going to be promoted if we can't see you. Is there a way of, of fixing that? The reality is that we are hardwired, the like synapses in our brain and recall of memory is very short term. So it's no, it stands to reason that if I see you every day and I am then in the process of assessing a workforce, you're going to be closer to the front of my mind than someone I haven't seen for six months.
that is the reality of human behavior. But there are other ways that we can do it. There's about, you know, reward and recognition can be much more structured and a lot more equitable in how it's developed. But the reality is we're human and humans are making the decisions. Yeah, uh, but a lot of organizations have struggled to get those humans back into the, the workplace. Um, we've seen it in the US, in the tech sector, we've mm. seen it in the UK, in the, uh, the banking sector, telling people that they need to come in. Is forcing people back into work ever a good idea? It's never a good idea. Forcing anyone to do anything I don't think has ever been proven to be a successful way to achieve something. A lot of those leaders have fallen foul to terrible feedback around that force back to work. What leaders really need to do is reimagine what is the workplace and how to use it. Forcing someone to come into the office to do the exact same task they could do at home with you know, dropping their um, commute time. They, they need to be building work environments that are collaborative, that are oriented around meetings, group dynamics, rather than just presenteeism and ticking a box that you're sitting on a chair and a desk that I paid rent for. How do you, though, incentivize people to come back in? If you are paying the, the rent, rather than being in, I don't know, a very swanky office building, giving everyone really good coffee, how do you get them back in? It's all about motivation and inspiration and corralling your organization around a common goal. And should that goal incorporate the importance of being present in a working environment where you can be in close proximity to your colleagues. Also setting the tone. What we've seen often is a lot of leaders are requesting people to come into the office but aren't actually walking the walk themselves. And that then leads to complete conflict within an organization and a toxic culture will emerge. Yeah, I think Brian Chesky from Airbnb was saying that this weekend, wasn't he, that it's the foot soldiers that are going back into the office, everyone else is in the Hamptons. Yeah, and still, you know, now that travel's back, there's just a lot of business travel, so the two messages don't connect. And that's where people really underestimate internal communications within organizations. You've got to be sending the message, both, you know, verbally, but also physically as well. So what are you seeing here in all the organizations that you deal with here? Are people going back to office space? Are we seeing flexible working? 30 seconds left with you, what's your gut sense? It's very varied. It, it's very specific to industry and the types of roles but where possible leaders are doing their best to accommodate work-life balance. We've interviewed over four and a half thousand employees across the UAE and Saudi and in their top 10 desired values work-life balance has been there every single time. So it is a need, leaders should listen and there's always a happy middle ground. Oh, thanks for speaking to us this morning. We have been talking to the workplace culture expert, Lucy Darbo. She's the CEO of Together, speaking to us about that survey, suggesting that we are some of the hardest working office workers in the world, coming in third when it comes to the amount of hours that we are clocking up. Dubai Eye, 103.8. Join the conversation.